there are five Michelin ranked restaurants in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, and today we're going to three of them. Every time I read about something cool to do in this neighborhood or someone gives me a recommendation for something to do here, it always revolves around food and restaurants. So I've decided to go for it 100% by seeking out some of the best restaurants in the city. I'm Hava, and if you're excited for this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And while you're down there, if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications because it would really help to support the work that I put in for you here. You can also find me over on Instagram if you're interested in day-to-day -day content. Before we head to our first destination, I wanna give you some stats to put the honor of today's restaurants in perspective. According to the Michelin Guide website at the time of this recording, in the whole world, 3,402 restaurants have the Michelin Bib Gourmand distinction. If that sounds like a lot to you, a quick Google search told me that there are an estimated 15 million restaurants in the world, so 3,400 isn't that much in relative terms. Of those 3,402 restaurants, 440 of the Big Gourmet restaurants are in New York City. And of the 440 Big Gourmet restaurants in New York City, four of them are located in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. At the time of this recording, the world also has 2,814 one-star Michelin restaurants, and 54 of them are located in New York City. One of those 54 one-star Michelin restaurants is here in Greenpoint. That brings us to our first stop today, Oxamoco, a wood-fired Mexican restaurant decorated with one Michelin star. Decided, yeah. You, you definitely swayed me towards this uh, soya marinated tuna tostada. Yes, please. Thanks. Cheers. Thank you. Wow, that is so beautiful. Yeah. So this is tuna tostada. Yes. So it's going to be your tostada on the bottom, guacamole, radishes, tuna brushed with soy, and then salsa matcha. So salsa matcha is on oh. top. It's going to be uh, seven dried chiles, nuts, oil. Sesame, salt, and oil. Wow. And with a little sesame salt. This is basically a work of art. I mean, look at this thing. The way this tostada looks, I just want to like pick it up and eat it like this, but that's going to be very messy. So instead, I'm going to attempt a fork and knife even though it's got a crunchy bottom. Wow. I definitely feel like I'm gonna end up with stuff in my tooth with all this seasoned stuff, but it's so flavorful and delicious. I can see why this is one of their best sellers, most popular choices, and been on the menu since they opened about five years ago. Mm. Now, I'm gonna be honest, when, when this first came to the table, I thought, whoa, really? This little thing is $25? But after digging into my first bite and seeing how thick the layer of fish is, I will say, of course, there's gonna be an upcharge being such a nice Michelin star restaurant, but also, they really give you a decent amount of fish. This is not skimping me on the tuna. It's so good, I'm taking it to go. And something else I learned about this dish while they were packing it up is that there are over 40 ingredients in here. So even though it's $25, I really can't argue with this price. I also learned that this is one of just three Mexican Michelin star restaurants in the city. So definitely have to say, this is a really cool spot. And I'm glad I came. As we head out, let's comment on the amazing atmosphere here on the outdoor patio seating and also inside that you saw as we were eating. Pretty amazing, right? Well, I found out that the designer of this restaurant is the same designer who did the interior of Nura, which is a restaurant I've covered in Greenpoint here, which is in an old warehouse, but it looks really neat on the inside. So if you're interested in seeing that restaurant too and a different Greenpoint food tour, go ahead and make sure you click the link either in the description or up here at the top of the screen. And if not, or even if so, make sure you subscribe and the notifications turned on so that you'll be aware when that video does come to this channel. As a nod to this historically Polish neighborhood, our next stop is Pierożyk, which is a Polish restaurant. In fact, according to this restaurant's website, it's the Michelin Guide's only Polish restaurant in America. It has the Big Gourmand distinction. Awesome. 
Perfect. Thank you. As I scroll through this menu, I have to say I'm so impressed by how many vegan options there are, vegetarian options, and gluten-free. A lot of times when you see a restaurant trying to be inclusive, they put one or two of each of these on the menu, maybe, but they've got several options for each of these dietary restrictions. It's pretty cool. And as someone who eats a primarily plant-based diet, I'm excited about that. I decided to go with the one where you get two savory so that I didn't have to fully decide. Can I please have the spinach for one of the types? Okay. And maybe we should do the top two. The okay, top two? So top yeah. We'll do the top two. Okay. And then you've got me curious about the soplica queens. Thank okay. you. Oh, so this is... How do you pronounce it again? Sopika. Sopika queens. Vodka is a traditional Polish drink. I have ordered the Sopika Queens, which the bartender told me is very sweet. It smells pretty sweet too. I'm not typically a hard liquor girl, but we're going for the traditional experience here. So, cheers. Oh my gosh, that is really sweet. And really smooth. <gasps> wow, thank you. This is exciting. This is, again, really smooth. You could really sip on this. Wow. And look at these amazing pierogi, which pierogi are Polish dumplings, for anyone who isn't aware. And they are handmade here at Pierożyk. I ordered the potato and cheese and the sauerkraut and mushroom options. This one is vegan. The second one I mentioned is vegetarian. It also comes with these two dipping sauces, which I forgot to ask and missed what they were if he said so. I think it may be sour cream, and this one smells like dill, but we'll see. They look delicious, and I'm ready to dig in. We'll start with the potato and cheese. That is melt in your mouth good. And I don't know, I was for some reason picturing like American potatoes and cheddar cheese. This is nothing like that. This is so delicious. And I really wasn't leaning towards ordering this one, but the waiter did recommend it. So I'm glad I decided to order it. All right, let's try it in one of these dipping sauces. Let's see what they are. Sour cream. And something dill based. Okay, let's give that a try. Pretty good. Both good dips, but I have to say, this potato and cheese dumpling is so good, it can stand by itself. Mm. Time for the sauerkraut and mushroom. Very flavorful. The potato and cheese was a lot simpler of a flavor, so it made sense to try it with the sauces. This is so good. You know, we can give it a try with the dips, but it really has its own flavor profile going on. We'll give it a try. Regular sour cream. Kind of reminds me how you could put sour cream with a quesadilla to kind of like change up those flavors. It's kind of similar experience to me. And now for the dill dip. That works too, but I definitely think if I'm gonna use a dip with that one, I would use the sour cream, but I honestly really like these dumplings as they are, and I'm not sure I would add a dip to it. I have to say, it didn't really occur to me before I had this experience, but when I sat down and I'm here in this environment and I'm being served this food, there's something really special about this experience to me as someone of Polish descent, especially because right or wrong, I've always associated Polish food, German food, that whole area of Europe as being very meat heavy. And as someone who primarily eats a pescatarian style diet, this felt like something I would never be able to try. So it's really neat to sort of be able to connect to my personal roots in that way and also have the unexpected surprise of a drink I actually like. <laughs> so cheers. As someone who loves languages, I couldn't help but notice that pierogi, the name of the dish, and pierogic, the name of the restaurant, sound very similar. So I asked my waiter, who turns out to be the manager and Polish himself, and explained that it's kind of like the words cat and kitty. They mean the same thing, but one is cute and one is just normal. And so pierogia, the singular for pierogi, is, I think, kitty, versus pierogic is cat. 
So I just thought that was interesting and I wanted to share that tidbit with you. So far we've enjoyed Mexican and Polish food. To keep with the international theme, our next restaurant is La Fanfare, a lovely authentic Italian restaurant with a Michelin Bib Gourmand distinction. I love ravioli, so I'd love to try the sweet potato agnolotti. Cool, thanks. And the pasta here is homemade, so we've got to get homemade pasta at an Italian restaurant, of course. The complimentary bread. The butter's a neat consistency, too, and I think there might be rosemary in it. Mmm. Wow, thank you. The plating is beautiful. This is such a work of art, I almost hate to cut into it, but this is my meal. Look at that gorgeous inside, the sweet potato. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. That is absolutely delicious. It's, it's not light exactly, because it is Italian food, which is rarely light, but it's not heavy whatsoever. The sweet potato filling is just so smooth, and there was even some sort of hint of citrus in this flavor profile. Wow, I mean, as beautiful and dynamic as it looks, it absolutely tastes. This is incredible. I love ravioli. This is agnolotti, which is very similar concept, and I am so excited about this meal. On to bite number two. I just spoke to someone who worked here and he told me that what I'm tasting with the citrus is a little bit of orange zest in the filling as well as a little bit of cheese and he had the perfect word to describe the filling. It's like a mousse. And that's why I was saying it's light even though Italian is not typically light. If you could go to any of these three restaurants, which one would you choose and why? Comment your answer below and while you're down there, go ahead and like this video and if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications because it would really help to support the work I do on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to see you on the streets of New York, or at least in the next video. Bye!